Kia ora koutou. Welcome to our second episode of Rongoa Modi Plant Spirit and Beyond, where we speak with wisdom way showers who have a deep connection with Rongoa and Wairuatanga, traditional plant medicine, plant beings, fairies and giants, and the higher realms of spirit. We dive deep into the hidden realms of the Ngahiri, the forest. I'm your host, Joanne Hakaraya Olsen. No mai. Manawa mai te mauri nuku, manawa mai te mauri rangi. Ko te mauri kaiau, he mauri tipua, ka pakuru mai te pō, tau mai te mauri, haumie huie, tai ki e. Wonderful to have you here, marama. Kia ora, Always good to see you, always good to see you e hoa. Kenakui, Joe. It's really wonderful to be here. Thank you for the invitation to um, speak on this uh, corridor uh, with you today and with your uh, with your guests. Te whānau, kia ora. Ngā mihi, ngā mihi. Well, I'm going to introduce you, Marama, and um, and then we'll we'll get through. We'll get we'll get into the corridor. So. Um, Marama Mata, she's a mother of four children and grandmother to five grandchildren. Marama is a Rungwa practitioner of native plant medicine and traditional Māori healing. She is the founder of House of Rehua, which is a family-owned business of three generations of wahine that produces sustainable and natural products in line with traditional Māori healing practices. Marama is passionate about sharing wisdom and holding sacred spaces for women to heal through trauma and grief while connecting to native plant wisdom to transform their life journeys. Wow, that's really powerful, Marama. Really powerful. Kia ora, Jo. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's awesome to be here, you know, because I know walking in the, the wrong way journey is such a huge long journey a lifetime journey and so yeah it's wonderful to um be able to uh call it all on things that really matter for us you know as indigenous as in maori tangata whenua and um and and just to share call it all yeah Aye, aye, aye. Um, just to let our viewers know that uh, Marama and I, we've known each other for a while and uh, I, um, we've done some mahi together, quite a bit of mahi together, travelled together and uh, yeah, yeah. So it's really cool to have you Marama and I want to ask you about your business House of Rehua, um, how it all began and and yeah. What was the what was the um the force behind that? What was the the focus about House of Rehua? Well, you know, House of Rehua um came from a, a vision that um we wanted to fulfill a need because I've always worked in Maori um and in particular women's health. And so um uh, in, in particular, it was with um, cervical cancer and breast cancer. So working in that line of work, I really wanted to be able to um, meet the needs of our people in a way that that we could tap into our own Indigenous knowledge around Rungwa as a native plant medicine. So um, House of Rehua was a vision, and it was a vision of, um, three generations of wahine so that's my my mother who's in in her mid-70s and myself who's a grandmother as well um, and then my daughter who's who's a mother and so it's a has been about us three wahine coming together and bridging it's been about bridging old world knowledge from my mother who's been brought up with rongwa around her from her nannies and learning all this knowledge and then um to my daughter who's who's um you know got that modern contemporary for around 
um, how to bring new ideas through and um, using um, her knowledge around computers and IT and, and social media. <laughs> so bridging those two gaps together has been really amazing to um, um, come together um, under the umbrella of law. So um, House of Rehua was established in only uh, four years ago and um, and it's just grown from strength to strength and it's been it's a, a business that um, that we knew that we couldn't do it alone. We had to be together as a Fano to make it work and um, um, I remember we were doing vision boards with each other. You know, we've done vision boards. So what is our vision? What's What are the things that are going to drive us? And it's been all about um, um, our whānau, meeting the needs of our of our own children, our mukapuna, our whānau, and then it extended out to our iwi. And so um, being based up in Te Tai Tokiro, it's um, really really awesome to be able to help our our whanau across to Taitokiro. Yeah, so um, yeah, House of Rehua came from, actually the the, um, the tohu came from uh, a tohunga that, that trained myself and many others, like uh, like yourself, Joe, and um, and the the, the the name was given from our tuhunga, Billy Tuhua, who, who um, when he gave this name, he said um, that, you know, this will help to help to um, support and guide you through your journey through Rungwa. And it truly has. It's been, um, it's been that connection that we've had uh, right through. So being trained under tuhunga for... Um, I think over 10 years and um, yeah that learning has never stopped that learning has never stopped and so House of Rehua has grown we're, we're a Fano based uh, um, kaupapa that um, we we um, support uh, Fano. we support kaupapa and wānanga through um, bringing our traditional knowledge through um, as well as um, working in with uh, Rungwa, our native plant medicine, and all our different healing practices. So we specialize in um, uh, we specialize in mahi awairua, so spiritual mahi, um, and miri miri especially, yeah. Wow. Well, wow. you've you've had um, yeah beautiful beginnings, and with what watching House of Rehua um, grow in such a short time, and just because of the um, the need for the kind of mahi that you do, Marama, hey, the kind of mahi that you do, there was a, a desire and a, and a need um, for that kind of mahi, so. Um, it grew kind of organically, watching it grow organically and grow into um, what it is now. Where do you, where do you see it going from here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am I putting you on the spot? Yeah, I really, <laughs> I never know. <laughs> um, so we started. Um, from our home you know starting a like a cottage industry um and from there we've we've expanded we have had um two um healing clinics and then over the covid we've closed both down and then now we're back back on our home base on our whenua doing a um building up our rungwa dispensary so we're, what whichever way it's gone there's always a way to move through with rungwa because it's it's expensive. Rungwa, you can touch into so many areas of um, of of how you want to build your own kaupapa or business and and tap into. So we from home we've been able to do um, mahi miri miri, mahi wairua, and had band loads of fauna coming up the driveway. 
<laughs> you know, so it kind of, and and um, and from there we moved to the shop, um, having clinics and experiencing what it's like to to be so out in the community and serving the needs of the whanau out there. And, um, you know, it's really amazing. The journey has been so awesome when you're able to touch the lives of so many families that really, um, that really need help. Um, and I think working in the area or the field of um, native plant medicine, you're able to, um, you know, not only work alongside um, a mainstream medicine, but you, with all our whanau, you know, we have a lot of our whanau that are on medication. Um, and so we're able to um, bring the rongoa in as, as um, so it complements that mainstream medicine. So, yeah, there's always a place to... Um, to bring bring different parts of rongoa through, yeah, whether it's um, native plant medicine or our healing practices, um, yeah. Kapai, so um, Marama, how did how did you how do you uh, keep yourself balanced? You know, with um, you know, with the mahi that you do, how did how do you keep yourself grounded and and keep the balance in your life between, you know, a fano, your mahi, um, yourself? Mm -hmm. What's what's your what's your recipe? Um, my recipe is eel. <laughs> <laughs> eel being divine creator, being the 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 one that that's the whole reason why we brought um, this whole kaupapa together under House of Rehua is because um, to uh, to walk the journey with Eo and so Eo being, being the main focus of everything that we do and um, that's been the whole purpose of why we do what we do <laughs> and um, and that's through our um, karakia and our um, focus our determination has always been under that under this kaupapa yeah I've always um I've always admired your your strong connection to Eo Marama for those that um for those that um are listening from other countries are you able to give a give a um an explanation on on who uh, Eeyore is? For me? Is that the question for me? <laughs> Who Eeyore is for me? Um, Eeyore is, is the reason why I was born into this place, the reason why I've been given breath, the reason why I do everything. Uh, um, I always, when whenever I'm working, especially when I'm working with native plant medicine or rongoa or practicing our healing practices, mari mari or mahi wairua, it's always about connection and the connection has always been directly through to eel and so the modi that comes down directly from eel is what, what you know, it's that life force principle that gives us everything that we need to be so connected and so that's, that's the whole reason why I um it's it's everything it's encompassed in everything that I do is that having that connection and so it's a um for me it's about the understanding that um it's it's not being um separated from but being connected to and that translates right through everything into detail into our environment and everything that's around us and into the trees and plant life and into the the breath that we uh, breathe yeah so um that's the reason why I do what I do otherwise I wouldn't do it <laughs> <laughs> Kia ora, marama. so um you touched on touched on Modi and yeah. and um one of the questions I get asked a lot is um 
you know what what is Modi yeah what is Modi and uh yeah I'd like to ask what what is Modi for you Marama um what is Modi for you and um yeah, and your connection to the Rako where Modi is concerned. Can you can you share? Yeah. yeah. So Modi Modi for me is about um, um it's a it's a vibration. For me, as I understand Modi, when I feel Modi, um it's a sensing. So even in the word rungwa is to sense. And so using all those senses around sight taste hearing touch and um and being able to uh, feel the resonance of modi whether it's you know you could be walking through the ngahiri into the forest and feel the um, presence of kaitiaki of our spiritual guardians or um, patupairi here um or just even feeling the um the vibrations that are coming from different plant life. But also the other part of that is, is feeling the connection that you already have with eel. And as it comes down, directly down into everything. So um, so what I'm, I'm trying to explain in a picture is, is having eel everywhere and the vibration of everything is everywhere. And you're all part of that whole picture, yeah. So, um, and it's always a, a feeling of uh, connection and being connected to everything as well. Um, so Modi is um, can be felt. Uh, well, I I can feel Modi. I can sense Modi. Sometimes I can smell, have a sense of smell to it as well. Um, sometimes it has a sound. Um, it depends on what your own spiritual gifting is and how that how that is for you and how you sense it out there. Yeah. Beautiful. So when you um, connect with Arako, when you're when you're out, when you're out in the Ngahiri and, and um, you are about to harvest some rungwa, what um what are some of the things that you do to put you into a state of being or what are some of the things that you do to start um, when you go to harvest longwa? You know, the most important thing that I, I know uh, from my experiences of, of harvesting is, is always about the karakia and having that, um, that connection again through your kapu, through your words and your intentions and to um, come into a space where you are able to come together and feel the modi of each other. There's an exercise that I do with some women when we go through the ngahere and it's, um, and it's to, I usually get them to stand by a kohe kohe tree which is a beautiful, you know, wahine tree and um, we just stand there in front of the, the rako there and we get to, um, what, I, what I get the women to do is to step into the leaves. So they're sort of out there like growing towards you and then I get them to step into them and then they take the leaves and then they wrap themselves in it and then they just breathe into it. And in that way, it's a kind of a, a way to connect in and also what happens too is that the Rako will show you um, a part of their past or what they've been able to see. And so using your, your matakitu or your visionary gifts, you're able to look through the, um, the tree's past and look through to where they used, what, what it used to be like back in the day, so to speak. So just other ways of feeling them the Modi so it doesn't only come out to you but you can step in to the Modi and stepping into the Modi you can step into its past through its um through its own vibration I hope that made sense <laughs> 
definitely killed her for that marama. That's really beautiful because um, we always tend to, when we go into the ngahiri, <clears throat> we're always, you know, um, wanting or taking, you know, or wanting to receive. And what your, you know, your exercise there is is actually being part of the lako and giving back to it by sensing its whole um, whakapapa and seeing mm -hmm. what it sees. And that's a beautiful, beautiful um, experience. Very, very tapu. Mm. Yeah, it's been, um, there's been some powerful um, shifts that have happened for women that, have, that I've been with that have um, done that, where they've, they've um, just let things go through their tonguey, through through remembering back through um through their uh, their own letting go of grief or stress or whatever it may be that they need to let go of and you know it's the beautiful transition that happens through the raka the, through the trees is that when you give it over the trees can take it for you mm. so willingly they're just amazing yeah so um and so when you're in that exercise, you also um, you can give them your aroma as well. Yeah. Beautiful. It's uh, it's like a pudia. It's like a pudia eh? stepping yeah. into the korowai of Arako. That is so stunning. So just talking about kohi kohi. Just um, you brought you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're talking about kohi kohi. Um, mm -hmm. Would you like to share? You've said it's a um, um, arako for wahine. Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit more yeah. about kohe kohe? Yeah, I, you know, I love kohe kohe. <laughs> kohe kohe is just such a beautiful rako. And when I think about kohe kohe, Joe, I think about you. <laughs> um, kohe kohe is, is uh, such a beautiful wahine plant. And of course, you know, she helps to um, clear out the whare tangata, the womb. And one of the one of the things that I love doing is doing the pudia, which is the cleansing of the body with the leaves on, on the skin. And so because the kohi kohi grows, they've got like fingers. And so when you're hitting the body, they're sort of like grasping the grasping the body they're like this very very gentle like a hand and so kohi kohi is such a beautiful um healing wahine plant to help with um heavy bleeding uh, menstruation it helps to regulate your weight um helps to clear out the whare tangata but it also helps to um helps with the emotional side of a wahine that if you're going through a lot of deep mamai it will help to shift right deep down into the puna, which is um, deep down into your puku, and um, draw out what needs to be drawn out to clear out the um, clear out the deep emotional stuff that's held there, yeah, that's stuck. So very gentle and beautiful because she's got her star-like flowers. So wonderful, gentle. Rako, but very powerful, deep, deep mahi has the ability to work deeply into that area of the body, yeah, for women. So if, if women are going through any kind of deep emotional uh, trauma uh, or stress that they've experienced throughout their lives, um, and it's held deep within that area of the body, then you're able to use that rako to address those deep issues, whether you take it internally or lay it on the body like a poultice or put out the body with, with the, the rhythm of the leaves on the body. Yeah. Such a um such a powerful rongoa. I think that um as you mentioned, it has um what it works with the surface of the of the body. But the intensity of the um, the emotion and and what it brings up to the surface, eh, can really be quite intense for wahine. Be quite intense. Yeah. yeah. But if they're ready to go, if they're ready to um, 
go down that track and mm -hmm. and get to the core of um, trauma, um, anything to do with the funny tangata. Um, kohi kohi is the one, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's one of the the main wahine yeah. rongoa. Yeah, and you know, Joe, because I because the taste of it eh, is very bitter you're either going to take it or you're not because it's just got this particular taste that you know and I always say if you if you drink it then you're ready for it but um I think it's a good indication of the power of the modi of that particular rongoa and how deeply it can work um and so because it's so bitter but um when it's taken um when it's worked on on the body it can has the ability to to move and shift um really big blocks yeah mm. yeah i i always feel that um wahine need to taste taste that bitterness and taste the witty of what it does within the tinana within the body hey oh, to yeah. really feel its mana <laughs> and and woody woody right on through um yeah so true yeah I love that Joe like you know witty because you know when you're wittying and you're taking that almost like ah oh, gosh but yeah and then that vibration will just goes right through your body and shift shift at a cellular level as well so you're not only um you know going through the blood system but you're going through the cellular memory of whatever that is that you're cleansing pai manama so being cellular then it's working with um whakapapa ancestral ancestral lines as well absolutely yeah and yeah and also working through the um the wahine lines right so yeah beautiful beautiful yeah. I know some of the wahine that are with us tonight have um have tried kohi kohi they've um tasted kohi kohi and they all love it oh well <laughs> oh well done <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of thumbs up coming <laughs> yeah oh beautiful thank you for sharing sharing that mātauranga marama of mm. kohi kohi it's always beautiful to talk about that that rako um yeah. i wanted to um you know i had a list of partai for you i've asked you none of them it's just <laughs> it's just the way it goes <laughs> just the way it goes um oh well basically you've you've answered <laughs> answered them anyway but um what would be your um, best piece of advice for for people who are starting out on learning about rungoa? What would be, you know, where would you ask them to start? I mean, I I, I can imagine you get quite a few questions on on how they can learn rungoa. Yeah. What What do you do? There's there's what do you do? What do you suggest for them? Yeah, you know what the best thing that I could suggest is to actually just go to the Ngahiri is to go and sit in the forest and to listen and to hear all the different sounds that you can pick up whether it's the most furthest sound or the closest sound because we live in such a busy world that we don't listen enough to the, the smallest thing so and again it's about connecting yourself back in and and not being so uh, having that sense of um, disconnection so when you're in the ngahiri of course you feel more connected not only to yourself but you can be more connected to the creator you can be more connected to to tayal to all your surroundings and and everything that's around you and to really tune in tune in and to um, heighten your your natural gifts that you already have, which are the, um, you know, the all senses of smell, taste, and sight, um, and to touch as well, and just to allow yourself to open up those senses and just be and let go, 
let go of all all the stuff you might have been going through in your day um and just to be in that moment because it's amazing that the things that we tend to miss um when we're not feeling so connected and that way we it's easier to connect in with karakia with your your prayers and easier to connect in um, with your creator um eo and with wairua so we say rongoa rongoa is um yes it's about native plants and and having that connection but it's also about wrong uh, about wairua and so um not forgetting about our wairua our spiritual well-being our wairua tanga and how do we nurture our our spiritual wellness um and so yeah it's all about wairua okay that, that's great advice that's great advice marama <clears throat> have you um you know that connecting them to sitting in the ngahere that's a great piece of advice I think that when um when people are wanting to learn about rungwa they've got a strong desire to learn and it's like um you know what is behind that desire what's behind that desire and usually it's a it's a call for it's a call for help, isn't it? It's a call for um, um, that connection to eel. Mm -hmm. And so your advice for just for sitting in the ngahire is to is to be able to open yourself up to eel being in the moment. Help. Yeah, absolutely. Because as we know, we we taught in the um, in the um, creation stories that your gifted um all rungwa, all plant life and so when we we think of ourselves as, as not being uh, disconnected but more connected to everything in our environment and um and so we look to our our uh, native plants all the trees as our elder siblings um as, as our tuakana and so um so that's how close we are. We're we're part of a family, and so we, um, of course, we have uh, just so much respect for our for our family. And so, when we go to harvest, we we do our karakia and we observe those those, those practices um, to um, to hold those relationships, but also to think about the sustainability of of our environment mm. and so always looking about the you know looking at the future of our our plant life and how do we look after it how do we nurture our plants are we planting in more um more trees you know it's that's a really good thing for us to think about if we're going to um be practicing rungwa um, or native plant medicine as to what are we doing for the ngahere to keep growing and being sustainable is about growing more um, rako into those places wherever that may be yeah mm. yeah that's yeah really important to to note that yeah um being sustainable yeah, that's that's something. So when you're um, out in the ngahere and you're you're harvesting, these are some of the things that are on the top of your mind when you're looking at rako is that balance, say, eh? keeping that balance of sustainability and what you're what you're taking, what you're giving back. There has to be a balance. There there has to be a balance, if not more of what you're more of what you're giving. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we can't be taking and taking. It's it's a practice that in um, te ao Māori is that we practice is about sustainability and it's about the future for our um, future generations and our you know our children and our mukupuna that we're mm. setting ourselves up for the future mm. of our children's children. Um, and yeah 
I think you know we need we need to look after our our forests. Yeah. I Kilda Kilda Marama. So just um, shifting gear a little bit, yes. I. <laughs> Marama and, and I, we have a Rungua healing retreat coming up in Tehinga in Bethel's Beach in November. And um, the Rungua that, um, the Rako that have um, been guiding the way, one of them is uh, Po Hutakawa that has been guiding the way. Marama, would you like to, to share, or we can call it all about the Modi, the Modi of Pohutakawa and um, yeah, the Modi of Pohutakawa and, mm-hmm. and what she has to what she has to um, share with humanity at this time. You know, Joe, I I really have a deep respect for Pohutakawa um, because of the the Modi that that she holds is really powerful. If you think back in history, you know, we we know that the different waka have been tied to the Puhitakawa, um, the core iwi, the bones of our, our tupuna were held at the base or in the trunks of Puhitakawa. Um, Hutakawa is the rako at the top of the north here, and it's where the um, spirits leap from to continue on to Hawaii. Such an amazing uh, rangatira, a really strong, powerful rako. So the modi of it is already told in those, you know, how we um, have so much respect for this rako. I had a vision once, and I'd like to share that with your um, your uh, viewers today. And so back when I, I was only in my 20s, and so by, by the age of when I was in my 20s, my spiritual gifting had, had opened up. And so I was at a lake, um, and I saw a canoe coming across a lake, and it was full of um, of people rowing this, this waka and in them they were all chiefs and so and they all had the red flower of the putakawa in their hair at the time I didn't I didn't realize you know what it was um, until later on in my life I realized that it was the putakawa that I had seen and that showed me that how how powerful that or how esteemed it's held um, as a rako, as a flower when it's in bloom, is that it's a true rangatira um, rako that hold, holds a lot of mana and is tapu. And so, and when you relate it to how the um, bones of our tupuna were held in the base of the trees, you can see and know that that is a tapu um, rako. And when they're sent off, that's the um, the putakawa is the dako is the you know before they go to Hawaii. Mm. So it always also holds that mode and that tapu. But the wonderful thing that I understand it to be is that it has that direct corridor from eel. And so that rako has been sent for that mahi, that particular mahi, and it's tapu. Yeah. So um, it's a direct corridor. From eel. Mm. Kia ora, Marama. Nga mihi for sharing for sharing your for sharing your vision. That was really beautiful, truly beautiful. Oh, how powerful is Pohutakawa? Just um, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> there is um, just so much there that uh, that there is just so much there. Just there's so much. Re, regal regalness re, majestic and um yeah she's a real beauty and yeah yeah I think that um when you know when the um during the Matariki during Matariki uh when the um Puitakawa, uh one of the stars that was that was um 
was out there, was coming into light. I think a lot of wahine had um, pohutakawa coming into their coming into their field, and it was, you know, and she she wasn't in bloom, in but her leaves there was something about her leaves that was glowing. It was almost like the new tips or something was was coming up, and to be able to tune into that part of the that arco during that time was a beautiful experience. I think there was a lot of wahine that 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 um, yeah. she got people wahine's attention at that time. Mm, yeah, yeah, really yeah. beautiful. When I when I think of Pahutakawa, I always um, I also think of the stars, and so Pahutakawa being one of the stars in Matariki. Um, yeah, she's already there, you know, and then she she shows us the way. Through through being the the rako that sends you off to Hawaii back to the stars, so it's you know carving that pathway through the wairua for um our you know whānau to hoki kainga go back to back to eo. Sort of like a circuit coming down from eo and off you go <laughs> back through the through the puhutakawa. Stunning. Stunning Korero Marama. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so so beautiful. You, when you, you know, it's um when you go into this Korero, like I um I just know that when you talk about Rako and you're in that sphere of the Rako, you can really feel the Modi and you're really taken there. You're you're taken in there, but you're um yeah, and it's such a beautiful space. And then to, you know, and just to keep grounded, eh? Just to keep grounded while you're you're in that space. Yeah. And you know, the, the potakawa, when I think about its modi as well, as as in taking the medicine, um, has the ability through its modi to um to uh, break through things that hold you there. So you could be going through some addictions or coming out of addictions. And that Rako has the ability to move those addictions and to detox the body really uh, strongly detox. Yeah. So, yeah, it has a lot of power. <laughs> Kapai. Kapai. Marama, do you have any workshops or, or anything that's coming up or um, that you'd like to share or what's what's coming up for you? in the next few months or what's coming up for you full wow. stop <laughs> besides um well I'm really excited to be um with you Joe at in November I'm really really excited to be at your side um in workshop and uh so yeah that's my main one <laughs> yay <laughs> besides that besides that um I I have been working on this kaupapa for a couple of years now and um, one of my favorite uh, rako is the kawakawa and so what I support um, our whanau when they they do this kaupapa is to um, help to strengthen their abilities in terms of their um, their gifts their spiritual gifts to um, to work alongside the kawakawa and to work through um, the in particular the spine and to go work through the timelines of their life from the time they were conceived to the present day and to tap into those different areas of your life where you need to let go of stuff and so working with the kawakawa is the um, She's the waka, the the vehicle to um, house the the kaupapa. and so I just happen to have <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the kaupapa I've been working on. Um, it's mm -hmm. today Aroha. It's been a two year um, journey, and it actually just happened after the um, during the first lockdown. So you know. We all had lots of time to 
finally get all this downloading onto you know into print so this um kaupapa is this is the workbook but there's a whole kaupapa with it and um and so um i work alongside groups of of um people to address trauma and to address um, cellular memory and how to let go of um, things that can hold you back in your life and to be free of it, move, moving forward. And it's the kawa kawa that helps you to do that. And so the, the corded off with the kawa kawa is that um, eel gifted down this plant um, to to humanity to help heal um, to help heal us all and so that's why it's such a an esteemed rako and and has worked right across the country everybody pretty much knows what kawakawa do does um, but um, kawakawa also has the ability to move you through te ao wairua to um, to expand your um, an understanding from te ao kiko kiko and from the physical world into the spiritual world. And, um, you know, interestingly enough, one of our um, things that our, our queer do that, or that we do when we go to a tangi is we wear the, the rako on our head. And so that's been a symbol of um, grief. And so kawakawa, as it's worked that this way traditionally, it also helps to address um, grief and trauma in your life. So um, there's so many things that it does. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be bringing um, workshops through. And um, hopefully as I get freed up, I'll be able to um, run workshops across the North Island. For a start, yeah. <laughs> from the north, I'll start in the north. <laughs> I thought, I think you should say Aotearoa and beyond. <laughs> I, I see that's huge, huge mahi. I've been really, I've been really blessed to to actually see the mahi that Marama does, and that she's been working on on this for a while. Oh, it's absolutely stunning just to 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 look at that mahi and to see what it does I'm yeah really beautiful so if anyone gets a chance to to do one of these workshops I I strongly urge you to do it real life-changing stuff life-changing um work marama that's been a big kaupapa for you and it's I know that it's taken up a lot of your a lot of your time but um, I know that it's going to come come out very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yeah, yeah, really beautiful. Um, I know we 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 haven't got much time left, but I I thought that I would um, if anybody has any partai that they would like to ask, um, Marama, you by all means pop it in the in the chat and. Um, and we can ask Marama. Now, while you've got the opportunity, she is a beautiful uh, kairongwa. She is a tōnga. So now is the an opportunity to be able to ask her any partai, anything, anything. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Nothing> so, Mar <laughs> <hard. laughs> Nothing as hard as I've asked you tonight. <laughs> No, that, that was really beautiful, Marama. It's always a pleasure to to coordinate all with you. And um, yeah, I love I love um, the depth of of where our coordinator goes to at times, and whew, then I have to go and ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, oh, Orally, kia ora, Orally. So we've got our first um, partai. Kia ora marama, could you tell us more about making rongoa from Pohutsakawa? Hey, hey, I really good part I. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually I um I I feel like it's a it's a rongoa you have to be careful with in terms of its medicine. Um, like I said, it has the ability to um 
work with addiction and um and so moving mountains in the body or in the uh, in the mind mm -hmm. um it is a strong medicine it's uh, good for like you know cleaning out the body so dysentery and things like that um so yeah it's it's a rongoa that's that I feel needs to take care and how how it's done and it wouldn't be a very strong uh wide arco if you were going to make that um it would be given and lightly and how it's made and how it's how it's administered and what why you're why you're doing it here yeah. what is the purpose of uh making that rongoa mm. Did that answer your question, Aurelay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Tēnā koe, marama. That's awesome answer. I, I just want to add to that because um, when we hear things about rungwa, the first thing we want to do is we want to go out and we want to, we want to make it. And um, it's like if it calls to you, I always see some, some rungwa as um, the first line there's a there's a um, a first line and then there's a second line of what we can work with individually or or personally and if you have that um, um, if you have that calling to work with um, particular rako otherwise it's it can be too strong for our wairua to take um, you know just connecting to the modi of Pohutakawa is enough in itself eh. Is yeah, that, that can be a rongoa in itself. Yeah. It's just to to um, smell the kākara of that, you know, the, the smell of the rongoa, uh, the tree, mm -mm. and just sensing its modi, that can be such a powerful way to connect in as well. But um, in terms of, I always say, you know, it's good to have a mentor, someone that, that's already practising in rongoa for some time, and then uh, coming under their wing to make sure that you know you're practicing in a safe way as well. Aye, kilda, kilda, marama. Yeah, it's a, um, it's an important. That's a really good part. I though you know that orally brought up because um, yeah, some rongoa we have to wait. We have to to wait until we've built that fanongatanga built that for knowing a tongue with it, eh? Yeah. Mm. Nga mihi. Ka pai. Ka pai orally. Um, oh, Philip has got a pātai here. Kia ora marama. I found a recipe for puhutakawa cordial I was going to make this year, but would that then be too strong to use and give? Thank you. Oh, oh that's the difference between kai and rongoa. Mm -hmm. it's, in all, um, it's, a, it's another yeah. kaupapa eh? yeah and the, the with the puhutakawa it's done with the, the red you know with the flowers eh? yeah which is a, it's a gentler but strong gentle but strong um, rongwa as well yeah I I, I that's, you know, that's the corridor between kai and rongoa when we go to look at, um, so that Pohutakawa cordial would, to me, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an inu, it's a part of the kai. So then, you know, if you were to look at it as rongoa, you know, you've got a different, you've got a different connection to it in terms of the tapu, in terms of the tapu and what you've been, uh, what you want it for. I think the cordial, I've seen that cordial was all over um, Facebook during Christmas time. And I think that's awesome. Really beautiful, a beautiful way to bring it into our lives and to show our um, tamariki, the beauty of our native plants and how it can be used as a kai or an inu. But as a rungwa, it would be, it would be different. But pai to pātai, Philippa. <laughs> Ngā mihi. Kia Just seeing if there's any um, cordial with flower. Yes, with flower. 
Uh huh. I've oh, seen wow. Hoitakawa ice cream also. I I have. There is a local man in Otaki. Was that you, Jude? Who put that, Aaron? I there was. There's a local man called Mike King who makes um, Hoitakawa ice cream here. Oh, wow. Oh, lucky, eh? All in yeah. Otaki. <laughs> <laughs> All in Otaki, how beautiful. So, but oh. just bearing that in mind, sustainability of our Puhutakawa um, flowers, Nick Minute. <laughs> Everyone's Nick making it. <laughs> Nick Minute, no red. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, he, Tiao, um. I made my tamariki, the cordial for Christmas was lovely. Kapai, kapai. Oh. Yeah, that's beautiful, eh? It's, yeah. 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 It's a beautiful way to bring in our, our, our rako. Kapai. So I think that was the last, um, the last partai. Marama, is there anything that you'd like to share before we um, close the session tonight? I, I'm just looking at make sure I've ans asked you all the <laughs> questions. Mm -mm. So we know your favorite favorite rongoa. You've already mentioned it's the kawa kawa, and yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. But is there anything that you would like to share before we close for this evening? Um, I did want to just touch on um, the ha, the breath, and so the breath being such an important part of um, I was going to say daily life. <laughs> Gonna breathe such an important <laughs> <laughs> if you're if when you're so if you know if you're out in the ngahere and you're and you're um you know going to do your karakia sometimes it's about just taking that breath and so what what it does when you do some deep breathing is it allows the nervous system to relax to let go to um self-regulate it helps if you're in a state of um, anxiety, stress, depression, or, um, you know, even if you're in that fight or flight mode, the breath is such an important way for you to uh, de-stress and to be more connected to yourself. So one of the, the um, breathing exercises that I I do is called the four six breathing and so when you take a breath in for four seconds and then you hold it for four and then you let out through your mouth so you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth when you breathe out through your mouth for six seconds and nice and slow by the third breath you should be in a state of toe in the state of relaxation and so I just wanted to share that with you because it's such an, a good way to do it really fast. Or if you're having a stressful day, it's all part of rungua. Okay? So you're bringing it back to, um, back to your daily life. If you're ever stressed or for any reason, just stop and do the four, six breathing. Say so four, breathe in. And then at the top, you hold it for four. And then release out through your mouth for six seconds. And then you should be nice and relaxed and ready to go again. <laughs> oh, that sounds that, that sounds magical. Marama, that sounds like something that we could could we, could end on tonight with the four yeah. six four breath. And mm -hmm. when you complete when we complete that breath, we can go into our closing karakia. That sounds beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Hi. Okay. Kapai. Hey, ha kiroto breathing. Tahi rua toru fa ha kiamo and ho tahi rua toru fa and release your breath out through your mouth. Tukua, tukua, tukua teha. Breathe in, ka kiroto breathing. Tahi. Rua toru fa ha kia mo and ho tahi rua toru fa and tukwa toha kia release.
release out through your mouth. And last breath in, breathe in, tahi, rua, toru, fa, ha, kia, mo, tahi, rua, toru, fa, and release out through your mouth, tahi, rua, toru, fa, lima, omo. And witty. <laughs> That was beautiful. That was beautiful, Marama. Nga mihi nui ki a koe, Marama. Thank you for being here tonight and sharing your amazing wisdom, your mātauranga. I know you're a busy wahine, busy mum, and really grateful that you've you've been able to share with us tonight. Thank you, Jo. It's been a pleasure and lovely to meet you all. Hope to see you sometime. Might see you at the retreat if you're able to, or or see you on a workshop sometime. Um, and thank you, thank you so much for this uh, time together. Nga mihi marama. Kia tō, kia tato kato, te atapai o tō tato ariki au kiraiti, me te aroha o te atua, me te fifinga tahi tanga ki te wairua tapu. Ake, 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 amen. Amen. Mauri ora.